A very busy summer has just come to an end with the announcement of the first major LHC results at the summer conferences. It is these results on which we are going to focus today in our programme with our guests Christophe, Monica and Yves. We are going to talk about the Higgs boson, the standard model, but also supersymmetry and particles which seem to be in a bit of a hurry. François has prepared a lesson in less than one minute on dark matter for you, and Stéphane is going to take you on a journey somewhere inside CERN. So let's get started. François, Stéphane, are you joining me? Yes, I know. We are now testing a new accelerating technology. We travel at about 0.0000003% of the speed of light, and we are approaching now the beam dump. We are just arriving. See you right away. Welcome, Francois. Welcome, Stefan. Hello, Anna. Welcome to all of you to this first edition of What's New at CERN. So hello Christophe, Monica, Eve. Yeah. thank you very much for being with us today. So you are all particle physicists working on the LHC experiments and the LHC has now been working for a year and a half at unprecedented energy levels. Your experiments have already accumulated vast amounts of data and were all eagerly awaiting the first discoveries. So this would be my first question to you Eve. Um, what would a discovery look like? Say we were looking for the Higgs boson. How would physicists see the results? Well, seeing the Higgs boson is pretty much like looking at the fireworks in these very huge and complex detectors. Actually, you can think of the proton in the machine as the rocket, and then the Higgs is the chemical compound. And then you see from the pattern and the evolution of the pattern in the sky, you can work out the composition, the chemical compounds. So we see, we see collisions of proton-proton collisions, and we see those events as they evolve in the detector. We construct those events and look for a very characteristic pattern of the Higgs boson. But you don't actually see it? We don't see the Higgs, as we don't see the chemical compounds in the firework, but we do identify those very characteristic patterns. And what we're looking at is uh, for is some kind of accumulation, an abnormal accumulation of some very characteristic pattern over the uh, expected background. So this is how, at some point, we will see the Higgs boson emerge from the background. It's a beautiful image. And Monica, how can we be sure of the interpretation of these results? Well, the result must be uh, consistently seen in several uh, ways, in several distributions, uh, so the pattern must be coherent. One can use several methods uh, to measure the same thing and make sure that the results are consistent. And uh, one can even use the fact that there are several experiments, for example, in the case of ATLAS and CMS, and they can cross-check each other to uh, uh, reproduce uh, the result that one of them has seen. So it's reproduction in the sense of looking uh, for coherence. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, and Eve, you work on the CMS experiment, whose main quest is the search for the Higgs boson. Briefly, can you remind us why it's important that we that we find it? Well, the Higgs boson is necessary to preserve the beauty of the theory, the fundamental symmetries of the theory, and it also preserves the theory from going to collapse at the TeV scale, to go, to make to make crazy prediction at the TeV scale, like predicting probabilities on, uh, larger than 100% for some collision processes. Mm -hmm. So we, this is the only known way to do that in an exact manner. Are you able to say whether or not it exists yet? We cannot say yet whether the X boson exists. What we have done is we have uh, observed and reconstructed a number of events which have the characteristic pattern of an X boson, but there are also similar kinds of events we expect from the background. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for more data now to see this accumulation which we hope to get, for instance, in some of the parameter space, let's say on the mass reconstruction of a specific object. And that is still lacking for the moment statistics. But we have excluded already a large fraction of the parameter space, the okay. unknown mass parameter, for instance, the mass of the Higgs, we have excluded a large uh, domain already. So we're, this is okay. very coming very close now. And what would the consequences be if we didn't find it? Well, if we don't find it, actually it's dramatic and very exciting, both dramatic and very exciting. It's dramatic because we lose that object which allows to preserve the theory. We also lose more than that because if the X does not exist, most likely the minimal, the most beautiful, let's say, version of supersymmetry are gone. So you lose the dark okay, matter. But it's candidate. also exciting. Because it's exciting because the machine was precisely designed to, to probe the TeV scale where new physics must appear in order to preserve the theory in absence of the X boson. Okay, thank you very much. Another major area for research in the LHC is dark matter. Francois, I give you 60 seconds. Well, let's go.
When we observe galaxies all around us, we notice that stars around them spin much faster than gravity laws would have predicted. It is as if galaxies were bathed in a massive halo of invisible matter. As this matter is invisible, we call it dark matter. What's impressive is that physicists estimate that this black matter represents 80% of the universe's matter. But even though several theories attempt to define what it is made of, it has never been observed or studied. It is only by indirect observation of its influence on galaxies that we are convinced it exists. Switching the light on will not be enough to see black matter then, but the LHC experiments may well shed light on its composition. So, Christophe, you work on the Atlas experiment, which, like CMS, is looking for the Higgs boson, but also other particles, some of which are candidates for dark matter. Among these particles are supersymmetric particles. How can you find particles which are impossible to detect? Yes, that's right. So you've heard that supersymmetry, in particular the lighter supersymmetric particle, can be a uh, can good candidate for dark matter. So this particle is invisible because it doesn't leave any trace in our detector. So you can wonder how can we find it. The reason is that we know how much uh, the LHC puts as energy in the proton-proton collision. So by measuring the energy of all the outgoing particles, we can just account and see whether we measured everything what's being put in by the LHC. What we can see, if there was a dark matter particle, we would be missing some piece. So the dark matter particle would just be going away and taking something off. So by looking for this signature, we could, in principle, do it. So these supersymmetric particles are still hypothetical, and the team went to meet the, th the famous sorry, theoretician John Ellis, who would tell us all about supersymmetry. Supersymmetry is a very beautiful theory that could help solve many of the problems left open by the standard model. Uh, it could help the Higgs do its job of giving particles their masses. Uh, it could help unify the fundamental interactions. It could provide the dark matter that astronomers want. And it plays an essential role in string theory. Wonderful theory, but no side of it so far. Uh, but so far, the experiments have only looked in a small part of the region where supersymmetry might be. Maybe it's somewhere outside that. We'll continue the search. Or maybe it's hiding and showing up in a way different from what we've expected, so we're also looking at that. If we don't find supersymmetric particles, then there's all sorts of uh, other ways, for example, of helping the Higgs do its job. Most of those predict many new additional particles, much like supersymmetry. So I believe that whether we discover supersymmetry or not, there is a potential for a rich new spectrum of particles to be discovered at the LHC.